Well, hello. This is Lana D, and I want to welcome you to another short devotional. I'm excited. I want to continue our series on the Holy Spirit, and I want to talk about sanctification. Not a word you hear very often, but an important one in Scripture. What is sanctification? Well, the Bible tells us that it's separation for a holy purpose or separating us from a sinful life and the process of making us holy. There are scriptures that we're going to look at in a bit that will help you understand that. But the work of the Holy Spirit in enabling believers to lead holy lives is important. We are to dedicate our lives to the service of God and conform ourselves to his likeness. I don't know about you, but I want and I need to be like Jesus. Let's take a look at the scripture. How to be sanctified. Well, first of all, you need to know that the Lord talked about this. Again, this is a word we don't hear in everyday English, but he talked about it by using, referring to us being holy. Leviticus 19.1 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You see, God is nothing but holy. And this is how he wants us to live our lives. All know this is not something we can do on our own. Isaiah 5.20 Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. What is this about? Well, anyone who lives today knows that years ago we had somewhat of a guideline. Churches would teach the way to walk, to, to walk in God's holiness, and the world didn't fight as quite as much. But today, it's certainly different, isn't it? The internet is especially focused on making good look like evil and normalizing what has always been considered evil throughout human history. Man's laws cannot make moral what God has declared immoral. Even if a sin is legalized, it's still a sin in the eyes of God. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six. 36. They were talking to Jesus and said, Sir, what is the most important command in the law of Moses? Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second most important is similar. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. The Living Bible says, and the second is like, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you and I were to be able to consider those two scriptures and understand them, meditate on them, and live them, this world could be different, I guarantee you. We wouldn't have the problems we have today if people would consider loving God the way they should. And secondly, loving each other. Imagine what kind of world we could live in. Hebrews twelve fourteen, Strive to live in peace with everybody. Pursue that consecration and holiness without which no one will ever see the Lord. You see, consecration and holiness is what God is talking about. Sanctification. Giving ourselves over to God. Again, this is not something that you and I could do without the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we're talking about it today. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, 
even as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is a walk. You and I have to walk each day. And the way to do that is by allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, by reading the Word of God and taking that inside. That is what will change you and I and make us more like the Lord. The last part of that scripture, it says, even by as the Spirit of the Lord, we are being changed. And it says, glory to glory. So again, if you feel that you have not arrived, don't be discouraged. Just know this, the Lord is ever merciful, slow to anger, and he's quick to forgive you and I as we sincerely come to him. Tell him what we've done. This is something that you and I can do each day. We should desire to live a holy life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, this is not something we can attempt to do on our own. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit with power, and he knew we needed him. That is why he told us when he left. John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus said. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter, who is also the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So it was always God's plan for you and I to receive the Holy Spirit. And being assembled together with them, commanding them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. We'll read more of Acts in our future short devotionals. But know this, we need to wait upon the Holy Spirit. As we pray to Jesus and ask God to help us, the Holy Spirit is going to do the work that God intended him to do. And just as they had to wait, he said, don't depart, but wait for the promise. I believe that means that you and I need to seek more from God. Salvation is the first step. There's more that God has for you and I. Our world wants to remove God from our lives. You know that. I know you do. Every day as I watch the news, I hear more and more things that terrify me as I think of where this world is. The devil is our enemy. He's the enemy of our souls, and he wants you to think you're all alone, that the problems you're going through or the problems that your children or your family or friends are going through have no solution, but they do. And with the power of the Holy Ghost, our prayers can be more effective. Our uh, walk with God can be more effective. God is able to bring his word to our hearts and minds so that we can tell others about him. We need to live our lives so that we can see that God is changing us. Well, I want you to know we are not alone. The world may want to remove God, but the world cannot remove him. We need to know that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He truly is. He is so many things. And as we continue this study in the days to come, I want to look at the Holy Spirit. Did you know that he comes with gifts for you and I? He truly does. Read First and Second Corinthians. You'll see what I'm talking about. And you'll see that God has so much more for you and I. And we can have a more dynamic life, a truly more dynamic life. So we will be studying the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need to know this, that the Holy Spirit wants to take an important part of your life, an active part in your life. He wants you to walk like Jesus and talk like him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you sent 
the Holy Spirit that could comfort us, to walk with us, to guide us, to show us what to do, to bring scriptures to the forefront of our minds. I pray now for my friends, Lord, for those listening to this message, Father, that they will know that there is more and that you desire a life, abundant life. And so today I I commit them unto you, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you'd help put a hunger in our heart for what the Holy Spirit has for us. Help us desire not to conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds and hearts. And we can do that, Father. This is, we are not walking alone, and this is not the end, but the beginning of the Christian walk you have for us. Well, until next time, I want you to know this. I remain your friend, Lonnie.